Hey guys, welcome again to another episode of When the Scriptures Become Real. It's a podcast where we learn, where we study, where we grow, where we try to become the best versions of ourselves if we can. That's where we can serve our Lord. Find the podcast on YouTube, uh, but also anywhere that you can get your podcast. We're so thankful that you guys are here with us today. So if you hear some extra noise in the background, we're trying something new today. So it's not me, just me here, but I've got uh, Sam Lawrence. Uh, he's here on the call with me here on his phone. So uh, we got we got to talking like we normally do, and uh, as we're talking on the phone, you know, we said the inevitable. We, we need to record, so let, let's find a way to record. So that's what we're doing. Uh, so hopefully this this can work out. So this is pretty cool uh, that I could do this with Sam this way. So uh, Sam, kind of introduce yourself again. They know you, but just kind of give a quick intro, and then we'll get started with our topic. Uh, yeah, um, like. Like Jordan was saying, we um, kind of we just were talking about certain things, and then we were like, "All right, let's record." And so here we are. <laughs> we, uh, I am. If you're hearing extra noise in the background, and if if I all of a sudden just quit talking, it's because I am driving on the interstate. Um, <laughs> I'm actually heading back to Knoxville, Tennessee, um, to work at a uh, a, a camp, uh, Hillbrook, uh, which is right close by to where I. Um, go to school I'm a again I go to the Southeast Institute of Biblical Studies in Knoxville Tennessee and so the uh the camp is where I'll be uh, counseling at for the next week and so if you hear extra background noise or if you hear home born honking or uh hopefully not tires squealing or anything like that just hey okay, I'm just <laughs> I'm on the interstate but uh yeah so Jordan uh, Jordan worked his magic and figured out a way for us to uh to be able to talk on the phone and to record this, and uh, I'm I'm just really excited to get to be here. To just uh, it's always an exciting thing to get to open to get to open up God's Word and uh, and study more about it. Yes, sir. I mean, I'm thankful he's here. I'm thankful that uh, we can record and continue to do this. All right. So here's what we're going with this. Um, our topic is please come back home. I miss you. Please come back home. I miss you. So all of us know people that um, are not a part of the body anymore. You know, they left, um, they decided to live the life that they want to live. And in doing that, sometimes we could just forget about them. And we can almost kind of hope, well, I just hope they come back. I'm praying for them. You know, sometimes we don't show them that the Lord wants them back. And you know, our Lord is the shepherd. And shepherds always go after the lost sheep. And so maybe as we're talking about this today, you know, maybe there's there's people that you know of that be encouraged by this. Maybe you're getting to that point where you just feel like, you know what, I just don't feel a part of the body. I don't feel the love that should be there. I don't, I don't feel all of this, so I'm going to go away from the church. You know, this is for you. I encourage you that uh, that our Lord always wants you in his presence. So Sam, as we kind of introduce this, what are, what are your thoughts on uh, this topic of just please come back home? Well, uh, the first thing I thought of was, you know, as you were saying all that, uh, this this may be kind of part of it, but it's just kind of something I thought about. Uh, you know, discouragement's a real thing, with, which this, you know, I guess maybe that can kind of be how it starts sometimes. You know, you kind of get discouraged and uh, can maybe... Uh, you know, kind of fall away or uh, kind of take a little bit of a break. Um, but uh, but discouragement, which again, I, I don't know if I'm covering the topic well, but like I was just thinking about Elijah, you know, when uh, Elijah was discouraged after uh, the prophets of Baal. You remember he, he won that great victory for God, and then uh, Jezebel said that she was going to kill him. Yeah. And so he flees and uh, goes away and Remember, he was discouraged. He said, it's enough. You know, he, he asked God to die. He wanted to die. He was done. And so, I mean, you know, for those who maybe have, uh, you know, fallen away or somebody who, somebody who knows someone who's fallen away or uh, just for the person who's discouraged, um, you know, discouragement happens to, uh, you know, I've been there. I, I've, I've been discouraged. You know, discouragement happens to the Christian. You know, it, it's a real thing. It's uh, it can be easy sometimes to get discouraged from certain things, um, you know, like maybe things don't work out necessarily the way we thought they should have or uh, the way we wanted them to. Uh, but really, it's it, it, it kind of a, it, it, it's a part, it's all a part of the growth process, I would say. 
Yeah, and you know, here's the thing, Sam. This this podcast too, this is for those that almost have felt like they've exhausted every option with the church. You know, maybe they feel like, you know, I don't have my family support anymore. Maybe they feel like I don't have my friends in the church support anymore. Or maybe these are people that actually at one point in time tried to come back. And as they tried to come back, they were welcomed with the older brother syndrome of 15. And so maybe we have some people yeah. listening that have a, a bad taste in their mouth because, you know, they, they don't feel welcome and they, they didn't feel welcome. And so what we want to do yeah. in this podcast is obviously be realistic, understanding what people may and may not do, but also be realistic in knowing that Christ regardless of what you've done, what you've gone back into, um, the lifestyle that you're living, that the Lord, the day that you left, you will be back. And so what, we're going to look at some things and we're going to try to answer this question and hopefully we can encourage you as we, uh, as we talk through this. But here's my first one, Sam, is why should you come back? Knowing what you know, experiencing what you've experienced, um, going through what you've gone through with the church. Maybe you have that bitterness and that taste in your mouth. Why should you come back? Number one, you should come back because Jesus has always wanted you, even when others threw you away. You know, yep. Sam, sometimes, and you can attest to this, and I'll pass it over to you in a second. But you, know, you think about Luke 15, and you think about the coin, the sheep, and the lost son, those things that were lost. We don't see in the text how those things were lost. We see how the son was lost, right? That was his own decision. Yep. But who's to say that the woman threw the coin away or the sheep? You know, obviously the sheep went off on his own. But you know, think about with us sometimes, sometimes we have this feeling that those that were once close to us, those that were once friends, those that were once family, we feel thrown away and we feel like we're just in this isolated island by ourselves and we feel like nobody wants us back but jesus has always wanted us. so kind of talk about that concept as we talk about our first point here Sam. the thing about it Sam Jesus knows exactly what it feels like to be thrown away so you may, you may have skeptics that are like well that all sounds good of what Sam says I know that Jesus loves me, but I just don't feel loved I don't, I don't feel that 
So here's why Jesus is so perfect. He's our perfect mediator, right? As the book of Hebrews talks about. So think about think about Isaiah chapter 53, Sam, how Jesus is described as a man of sorrows. And so in verse 3, notice what it says. He is despised and he is rejected of men. So those that are listening, you might feel despised by your family. You might feel despised and rejected by the brethren. But guess who knows exactly what that feels like? Jesus. He was a man of sorrows. And notice how the text even goes a little bit farther. It says he was acquainted with grief. But even though Jesus was acquainted with that type of feeling of other people feeling towards him, he still became a servant and he still showed ultimate love. So, I mean, to understand this, Jesus knows exactly what it feels like to feel not wanted, to feel thrown away, to feel kicked to the curb. Jesus, Jesus understands that. And, you know, I, I see some of our, I mean, I see friends of mine. I see people that were once members of the church um, and they've fallen away because of what other people have done and because they feel other people are hypocrites. I get it. I understand that. But think about it from the perspective of Jesus. That's how he felt when he came down here. But he still showed ultimate love towards us. So, I mean, Jesus can really sympathize with you if you let him. Do you have any other thoughts on that, Sam? No, I mean, you're exactly right. You know, you brought up the book, uh, the book of Hebrews, and, you know, he said he can sympathize with us, and that's exactly right. You know, Hebrews 4.15 tells us that, you know, he was tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. And so he's absolutely able to sympathize with us. You know, he went through the same things we went through, and he went through far more than we than we went than we've gone through. Um, and like you said, who who knows better about um, you know being despised by men? And like we were talking about a little bit earlier, think about what Jesus did and how he you know he he faced all of that the rejection, you know, being despised, being hated knowing he had their best interest in mind, knowing he was going to try and do the best thing for them, knowing he wanted to be, he came to die for all of us, you know, knowing he loved them, you know, but yet he still, he still endured it all, you know, for us. I, I mean, that's just amazing. It's, it's incredible, man. And here's the thing. When we go off like the prodigal did in Luke 15 because of maybe what other people have said to us or haven't done to us in the church. And we go over. The thing about it is we're always looking for someone to embrace us. We're always looking for something to care about us like we should have been cared about before. And so, you know, I, I always like the drop song lyrics, right? So uh, on Spotify, there's a great song and it's called Throw Away. And he mentions in that song, talking about the love that you should have for others. I will love you and never throw you away. So think about the love of Christ. When you come back to him, you sympathize with the fact that I know what it feels like to be you. But when you come back home to me, I never said, now it, it should be that all of my followers should, should love you. But I never said that they would. But I did say I would never throw you away. And so that's why your relationship needs to be so strong with the Lord. When I think about David, David talked about how the Lord was his shepherd in Psalm chapter 23. The Lord was the lifter of his head. He knew where his strength came from. And so sometimes I think we forget where our strength comes from. You have something on that? somebody down and so that's why like you said it's so important that we look to Christ 
because he will never let us down. He will always be with us. He will love us perfectly. You know, that doesn't mean things are always going to be easy, but that thing, but that means he's going to do anything and everything in his power to get us to heaven, even if we go through difficulties, like me was talking about earlier, this is kind of spinning off a little bit. But sometimes maybe the difficulties in life, we're so focused on the here and now, but God is focused on getting us to heaven, and that's his main goal. So if we have to go through some trials for a little bit here to make us more prepared, more ready to go to heaven, he's going to do that. He's going to do that. But anyway, um, no, you're exactly right. We just... We've got to keep our eyes fixed on Christ. Anything else falls short. That's it. That's it. And here's the thing, too. And here's a question to consider, Sam. If if our mindset currently, and if you're listening, if your mindset currently is, well, I'm not going to go back because the people are hypocritical. I'm not going to go back because I feel rejected. I'm not going to go back because I don't feel love. If those are your reasoning of what's keeping you away, then who are you putting your trust in in the beginning then? People. And then people let you down, and then guess what? Guess what? Crush your faith crush. So, what does that say about you? It says that you put your trust in people more than God. So, here's why, as we grow and we mature in Christ, then that, like you said, you know, there's times where I let people down. There's times where I'm sure you let people down. But who are we following? We're not following Jordan and Sam. Yep. We're supposed to be following our Lord. You know, exactly. Hebrews chapter 12, looking exactly. unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's exactly right. Too many times for what, what happens, and all of us have fallen into this. What happens is we, uh, we put people on this pedestal. And when they're on that pedestal, we expect greatness. And the first sign of them falling and the first sign of them letting us down, and because we had so much faith in them, then our faith crushes because they or because they acted wrong or because they were hypocritical. And then guess what we start doing? We start questioning everybody, which is not fair on other people. So, I mean, this is why Jesus gave us faith Hebrews 11, 1, but this is why he always told us, whenever you're in these straits, in these problems, and you're dealing with these issues, look to me. Don't look at anybody else. Look at me. Do you have any other things before we move on to the next point here? That's good. No. no I, I was just going to say one more thing, but uh, yeah. no, yeah, you're, uh, you, you're, covering it good. you're covering it good. Um, But no, yeah, it just made me think about how you know, we all, we're not responsible necessarily for others' actions. You know, we can't control what others do. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, others act the way they should, and sometimes we act the way we should. Yep. But we're all responsible for our individual actions, what we do, how we handle things. You know, if we, uh, you know, repay no one evil for evil, if someone's mean to us, we are told to be loving and kind to them. Uh, you know, and talking about, you know, our church family sometimes mistreating us or, you know, maybe we came back and they were rude or mean to us. Um, you know, I, I was thinking about somebody who's, uh, whose brothers were kind of mean to him. Uh, one of your, one of, uh, one of your boy. favorite Bible characters, Joseph. My boy. Yeah, you remember his, his family threw him into a pit. You know, he, mm. I mean, he, he had every reason to be bitter, to turn away from God, to say, you know what, I'm done with this. What did he do? He kept going. That's it. He kept going. You know, and then what did he do? He, he was he was confronted with his family again, and he was put in a position to actually help those who hurt him. That's and right. And what did he do? He did the right. He did the right thing. That's her. And so and that's why for us. To, oh, no, 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 yeah, keep going. That's good. No, I was just gonna say we all have the, you know, we all have our own responsibility to do what's right, regardless of how others treat us. That's it. And one thing that I challenge you to listen to, because it's easy to look at what everybody else did wrong and to justify why you're staying away is the right thing. But I challenge you to do this. It always takes two to take. So it doesn't absolve others for what they did and how they reacted and what they said and what they're currently doing. I'm not trying to absolve them from that. But how did you respond to it? How did you take it? 
how are you taking it now? How's your heart? Are you bitter? Are, you know, sometimes what we can do is we can project all of these things on other people and then see ourselves as the angel and the hero and the ultimate victim. Maybe, maybe there's some things I could have done better too. You see what I'm saying? Well, and that's, you know, because, you know, there was a time where, um, and I still have to watch out, you know, where I can be so focused in on what others are doing wrong or so focused in on what this person is not doing right or, you know, they did this, they did that. You know, and I've noticed that if I do that for a while or if I don't snap out of it, I'm so focused on everybody else, but guess who I'm not focused on? That's right. Myself. And guess, guess whose attitude kind of starts getting out of line? Myself. Because yeah. I'm so focused on what others are doing wrong that I don't see, I see the, I see the speck in my brother's eye, but I don't see the log that's in mine. That's it. That's it. And this is why, you know, for us, why should you come back number one? Jesus has always wanted you. He's always wanted you, even when others did. Then number two, Sam, as we're as we're talking about this a little bit more in scripture, number two, why should our brethren come back and, and we miss you? you know, we want you to come back. Number two, Jesus bought you while others threw you away. You know, those that have left, you know, sometimes it's easy to have this concept of, I feel thrown away. You know, I feel discarded. I, I feel different than everyone else. I, I don't feel like, even if I did come back, I don't feel like I would be truly accepted because of what I've done. So you always have that feeling of being, almost being trash, not even feeling worthy of it. But you know, I think about Hosea and how Hosea bought back Gomer. You know, I think about what Jesus did for us while we were yet sinners, right? He died on the cross for us. John 3, 16, right? God so loved the world that he gave. The, the love that Jesus has for you, even though you may not feel it through his followers, his love for you is so immense. And you talked about this, and I want you to get into this, man. But his love for you is so immense that Jesus gave up everything for you. And it's almost like when you really think about his sacrifice, you really want to throw that away because of what a few people So I got to talk on that concept, man. No, that's exactly right. I mean, that's exactly right. You know, I mean, we talk about the love. We talk about the love of God and sending Christ to die on the cross for our sins. That is something that I would say myself and a lot of us, I would say, um, take for granted. You know, just how wonderful of a sacrifice that was, how unbelievable the love is that's shown for us on the cross, how God gave up his son to come and die on the cross for our sins, sent his son into a world that didn't want his son, that put his son on the cross and killed him. And yet, his, his, some of his last words were, Father, forgive them, for they, not, they know not what they do. We don't have a, a, a. I know I'm speaking for myself. I don't. I, I don't have. I wish I had a better understanding and appreciation for the love of Christ on the cross. You know, just because I don't know that we can ever fathom how great of a love Christ showed for us and God showed for us on the cross. Mm. You know, like you said, willing to throw that away. If you throw that away, you are throwing away the greatest possession you could ever hope to have in this entire life. There is nothing, there is no one that will ever take that place, that will ever replace that in being in Christ. There is no greater love that is found in Christ. There is no better family to be a part of than the family of God. You know, sometimes, yes, we can be mistreated by our brothers and sisters. That, and like Jordan said, we're not taking up for them. You know, we... We each have our individual responsibility, and, you know, maybe someone did you wrong. But, you know, we have to continue looking to Christ. It will never, ever, ever, ever do us wrong. And That's just it. know that we're going to be okay. You know, we do the best we can. We try to love that individual. Um, we go to that individual. We talk to that individual say, hey, you know, uh, you did this and this. And, you know, we, we tell the individual about what they've done to us, and hopefully, you know, they'll... Um, they'll apologize. Hopefully, you know, we can be ready to forgive them. Um, but, you know, if, if, if we're talking to somebody here who's fallen away from the church or 
Mexico may be going away in the sand. Just stop and think, count the cost. Mm. So weigh, weigh, weigh in each hand what you have. You've got the life you're living now. What has it done for you? That's Are it. you really happy? Have you really gained anything? You know, have you found the life that you thought you would find? Or have you lost everything? Because for the Christian who's lost Christ, he lost everything. And what is the profit of man if he gains the whole world and yet forfeits his soul? There is no comparison. If we have lost Christ, we have absolutely lost everything. That's it, man. That's it. And here, here's something to you. Uh, as we, as we talk more about this, I think about Luke 15, man. And I think about when the, when the younger son came back home. Obviously, verse 28 said that the older brother was angry, right? And he wouldn't even go in. So think about it from the younger son's perspective. Guess what he could have done in that moment? When he saw that his older brother was angry, he could have just left again. I knew I should have came back here. You know, I knew I should have come back. But he, he was so convicted of where he was and what he needed to do that regardless of how his older brother felt, I'm coming back. You know, like I'm coming yeah. back. And for you, you know, I wish and trust me, I wish that I could say if you come back, if you really come back with the right heart and really want to get things right, I wish with all of my heart that I could say everybody's going to come with open arms. Heck, that's not going to happen. And I wish, I wish that wasn't the case. I really wish that wasn't the case. Yeah. But think about it from this perspective, too. When we stay away from the body because of what we feel like others have done to us or we feel rejected, you may feel protection and you may feel some sort of power by staying away and doing what you want to do because now you have freedom to do whatever you want to do now. But here's the thing as well. You're keeping your presence away from people that actually love you. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got to think about, yes, you might be protecting yourself from small people, but the, the more that you stay away, what about the people that genuinely miss you, that genuinely look up to you, that genuinely miss your presence? So, I mean, we have to think about things from a bigger standpoint more than just how things are affecting me. Does that make sense, Sam? So what, what do you have on that as we keep going through this? No, I mean, you, you're right. I mean, we have to look at things, <laughs> you know, not how they'll just affect us and not just what's happened to us, but, you know, how will our absence affect others? Mm. You know, we're told in Hebrews 10.25 to not forsake the assembly together. And towards the end of that verse, you know, and it talks about encouraging one another, you know, so could our absence actually be discouraging some of the brethren you know uh could us have fallen away i mean it it's probably discouraged some of the brethren you know we need one another we all help build up the body of christ together and i'll tell you this there is no family closer than the family of god you know the, your spiritual family in christ is the closest family we have i mean we have our our flesh and blood family absolutely but the family of god is going to be a family that lives eternally together and you know, talking about sometimes people can do us wrong, you know, that's the truth. And that's, that's a hard thing to get over sometimes. Yeah. But we should never, we should never perceive the love of Christ through a Christian. You know, that, that of course, we, it should be that way. Yeah. You know, we're told in John 13, 34 and 35, I think, you know, Jesus tells them, you know, this commandment I give to you that you love one another, you know, and that the world will know that we're Christians by the way we love one another. So our love should be an indicator that we are Christians, but that's not always the case. Yeah. You know, have to remember, you know, that Christ is the one that loves us perfectly. And uh, so I thought, I thought you said it really well. And I love that you bring that point up. And that's, that's so profound, Sam. Don't look at the love of Christ through us. Look at the love of Christ through his yeah. eyes, through him. Because he will never yeah. let you down. Yeah. And I, I remember there were times nope. where I would tell friends of mine uh, don't trust me because I'm going to let you down but trust trust him because he will never let you down yes, sir. and so I think I think it's a reminder unfortunately when these things happen it's a 
mind of that. The Lord is perfect in every mind. So that's why Peter, or, or that's why Paul tells Timothy, you know, you have to be patient. We have to, and later on in the New Testament, you know, we should, we should forbear with one another because we know we're not perfect. You know, so now that, that kind of puts into question our forbearance. So how is your forbearance? Which, I mean, that's another lesson for another day. <laughs> but yes, as we yeah, keep that's going. Actually something yeah, no, yeah, what were you going to say? So I was actually going to say that's something I've been kind of trying to be more mindful of. It's, you know, just my long suffering, just my patience with others. You know, that's something I know I can do a better job of. Yeah. No, I'm with you. And I need to do a better job of that, too, looking through that. Um, and here's here's our third one, Sam, as we're studying together with our brethren. Number three, why should you come back? Jesus is waiting for you to return. You know, when you think about that idea, Sam, of coming back to something, we don't want to come back to a place or to people that don't want to come back. Right? That's just natural. So if you feel like you're not wanted back, then why go back? So I get I get the logic. You know, why go back if I'm not welcome back? So, I mean, obviously, <laughs> to put it in, uh, to use a secondary example, uh, you know, you think about favorite Disney movie of all time. Think about The Lion King, right? So Simba's like, bro, why, why do I need to go back? I'm just gonna live my life the way I want to live it. Hakuna Matata, right? So yeah. every, everything's all good. So sometimes we say to ourselves that everything is all good when everything is not all good. And so sometimes yeah. we take we take the freedom to do whatever we want as Hakuna Matata. When really, we're slaves. We're slaves. So think about think about what Jesus is saying. Yes, when the old, when the younger son came back, the older brother did not want him back there. But he had been constantly waiting for that young man to come back. The father. The father. So here's the thing about it. When you come back, yes, there's going to be people that don't want you back. Yes, there's going to be people that's going to, uh, you know, not welcome you the way that you should be welcomed. But you should come to expect. It. But there are people that are going to want you back, and most importantly, from Luke 15, Father has been waiting for you to come back since the day you were. So, what's your what's your thoughts on that as we look at that Luke 15? Well, like I think about, you know, how how beautiful of a picture is it that you know we see. Like you said, we see the older brother, you know, we, we see his attitude and, you know, it's not a good attitude for the younger son. I mean, the, the younger son that came back and um, let's see, sorry, this is one of those moments where I'm kind of merging. And so I'm just uh, focusing on the, the cars. <laughs> but anyway, um, so we see the older brother's attitude and it's not a good attitude. But like you said, who had been waiting for him the whole time and how beautiful of a picture is it? that not only was the father waiting, but what does the father do when he sees the when he sees the son coming? He starts running to him. He starts running he starts running to him. Yeah. He starts running to him. He goes to him. He hugs him. He kisses him, puts a ring on his finger, kills the fattened calf. Like he never he left. Like he never left. He well he is just like you said, like he never left. And look you know, how excited is he that that son has come home? Hmm. You know, it's not like what we would see today or what we may think in our mind, you know, of the father just kind of looking up and say, uh-huh, here he comes. Right. I told you so. I told you that wouldn't get you what you wanted to do. How about now? No, it's, it's I'm running to you. I love you. I'm so thankful you've come back. Mm. Oh, that's good. And here's, here's kind of a... a a closing invitation and a closing plea, and I'll just hand it to you, Sam, after this, too. Um, you know, for, for those that are away and have been away for a while, 
understand that the father is going to treat you the same way if you come back. And so the thing about it is you have brethren that care. Um, you know, people like myself and Stan who want to see you back, who want to see you thriving. Uh, for those that know me, my number's the same, right? My, my I've had it since like sixth grade. <laughs> numbers the same, right? <laughs> Facebook, all that's the same. So here's the thing: with coming back, this is something that uh, we're trying to get you to see through scripture that the life that you continue to live in absolute freedom to do whatever you want when you want how you want it and with who you want freedom that you think you have if you haven't realized it yet it's actually ultimate slavery to what satan wants you to be into and i hope that you can see that but understand that true freedom comes from the love that christ has of what sam just mentioned so if, if you're struggling reach out you know if you're struggling you know if you want prayer we're here to help you guys. Um, and we're here to show you that Christ has always wanted you. And the Lord wants you back. And you're, you're welcome back. But you got to make the Right? Even in, even in Luke 15, the, the, the younger son had to get up himself. He had to realize himself, but I got to go back. So, Sam, do you have any closing thoughts as we kind of think about this topic of um, did you come back? That was pretty perfect what you said, but um, but yeah, I mean, just you know, like Jordan said, you know, we we happy to help in anything we can, any way we can, because we're not gonna, you know, I know for a fact that I've let people down. I know for a fact I've upset people. I know for a fact, you know, I've done things that I I've treated people in a way that I shouldn't have treated people. That I could have been more loving and more kind to people. Same here. I'm not going to sit here and act as if, you know, I, I've never, you know, we, we both, we're going to tell you, you know, we messed up. You know, we, we all messed up. But remember how David was said to be a man after God's own heart. Well, let's remember this. You remember David, what he did with Bathsheba. So how can we say he's a man after God's own heart? Joe? He, he did all that. He did that, that terrible thing, right? Well, we all make mistakes and do terrible things. But what made David a man after God's own heart is that when he fell away, he came back. Yeah. And so today, are we a man after God's own heart? You know, we may have fallen away, but will we come back? Because I can guarantee you without a shadow of a doubt, the life we live away from Christ is a miserable life. It is a life without hope. It's a life where there's, you know, there's no assurance. There's no happiness. And you're, you're giving your life to all kinds of things and people that don't really care about you. And there's no one on this earth and there's nothing on this earth that'll ever, that'll ever care about you or love you the way that Christ does. And there's no one who wants you to them more than Christ. You know, like Jordan said, you know, if, if you've fallen away, we both beg you to come back. You know, Christ wants you. We do. You know, Christ, God has done absolutely everything in his power to make us where we can live with him one day. He's given it to us. He's put it right there in front of us. He has come as far as he possibly can come where he doesn't mess up our free will. Yeah. So, waiting, he is wanting all of us to come to him. But the question is, will we come? Mm. That's it. The invitation's always there. It's always there. So, uh, we hope there. that... It's always there. Yes, sir. We hope that this could uh, encourage you. And if you guys know somebody that maybe needs to hear this, send it their way. You know, maybe this could be an avenue to get somebody back. Maybe this could be an encouragement to somebody. Um, but just a quick message to you, Sam, and I think this is important. Those that haven't left, we also have a responsibility to. Because when people come back, do we want to have the older brother attitude or do we want to have the father's attitude? We have, we have to make sure that when our brethren come back that we have the right disposition, we have the right heart, and we want them back just as bad as the father wants them back. So we got to make sure that we 
we fulfill our role. We got a role to play in this too for this story. So that's exactly right. We have to remember. We have to remember, like First Corinthians chapter six, you know, verses nine through eleven. You know, Paul's talking about, you know, the church in Corinth was caught up in all these different things. And in verse eleven, he says, "And such were some of you." That's right. We have to remember that when our daring brother comes back, we were in that exact same position before we came to Christ. We have to remember that, you know, the ground and level at the foot of the cross. The person we're pointing at saying, why are they here? We need to turn the finger around and say, why are we here? That's it. Because it is by the grace of God of him sending his son to die on the cross that we're able to be able to respond in faith to the gospel. You know, it's, we have our part in acting in obedient faith, but apart from God sending Christ to die on the cross, what chance do we have? And so, you know, we, we serve an amazing God. We have an amazing God who would send his son to die on the cross for us and while we were yet sinners. That's a love that I'll tell you straight up, I don't understand and I can't fully fathom. Yep. I hope to better understand it. But that's a love we can't we can't find looking at the world or necessarily looking at one another. But that's a love where we can go to God's word, look at the scriptures and read and look at the cross and we can see his love there. And we can know for certain that he loves he loves us more than anything. And he wants us to come to him. That's it. Hopefully this is able to encourage you as it's encouraged us as we study through this. You know, so we can make sure yeah. that, we have, that we have the right attitude and that we can be ready to receive right. as the Father's always ready to receive us too. So, um, Sam, thanks exactly. for being on. This, is, this has been great. This actually worked. Yeah, it actually worked. Yeah, I can't so, believe it. This, this has been really cool. <laughs> It's been it's been good, man. So, oh, I didn't get hit by a car. <laughs> man, you merge correctly. Everything's all good. I, I, it's awesome, but uh, it, it's been great. But really, you know, Jordan, thankful. Um, I know I can say personally, you know, I'm thankful too. I've gotten to meet you. Thankful that me and you have become really good friends. You know, uh, thankful that uh, you do this podcast, and thankful for all the good you do there with stacks with preaching. Uh, you know, I'm I'm thankful to have a brother like you, and you know, if you uh, if you've fallen away and want to come back, and like Jordan said, you know, if we can help you in any way, I know Jordan. Jordan will be happy to help you, and I'll be happy to help you. Um, you know, we, we'd be happy to help you. You know, this this life's hard, yeah. but so we have a wonderful God who who wants who wants to carry us through, and you know, there's wonderful brothers like like Jordan out there, and you know. I, I'll be happy to help in any way that I can do. And there's brothers like Sam out there, and I appreciate him. Uh, there's brothers like him who are willing to help and appreciate his zeal and his love for Christ that we can do this together to help ourselves, but to help those that need help too. So, um, so thankful Amen. for this opportunity. Amen. Um, so, Lord willing, we'll be back with another podcast probably next week. Um, so, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, Lord willing, we will see you guys next week. Thanks, guys.